Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where we're, today we're going to the moon. But first we have a slight technology issue to address. So last time I did my triple launch thing, uh, we, we got into a high atmosphere, got into orbit, did a little other um, sort of hop, skip and jump business. Um, and this has left me with science that's not been done in the biomes I've already been to. So I'm putting together this strange thing. Uh, it's actually a plane. Um, the main problem with it is that I don't have any wheels at the moment. So I, I, I tried to attach um, uh, what the girders on the bottom to give me little skid pads so I could just just get this thing off the ground basically. Um, uh, the other problem with it is my lack of wing structure. Um, all that I, I really have are these winglets and whilst they're all right they're not great um, there's no control surface there there's no way of turning stuff um, yeah it, it, it's all it's not great really is, is the, the the upshot of this I can't really do um, an amazing plane and we're about to find out how not amazing a plane we, we can actually do um, so basically at this point I'm just gonna throw some um, parachutes and things like that on it and then we'll go straight to the launch pad and by launch pad I obviously meant the runway um, that was not the best launch as you may have been able to see now I was wondering whether it was a fluke or not but it's actually indicative of a, a, a second problem that I have with this plane that I for some reason hadn't clicked at this point I've got no tail plane there's there's no no stability on it um, and for some reason I just completely ignored this uh, this is of course the experimental nature um, my, my, my first attempt at a plane on this it's not gone very well and it's gone so not well in fact that my oh no what, what am I gonna do here I thought I just yeah there we go <laughs> but my obvious answer is just to stick it on end and turn it into a, a rocket all we're trying to do is get get off to other areas um, and I, and I forgot that actually the runway is uh, a different biome which means that I need to come and do some stuff on the runway as well as the launch pad but first we're gonna just kind of fly this thing up uh, under rocket power we're just gonna turn it around and we're gonna head roughly for where that that map marker is out over there my map marker is of course a flag um, the first flag we managed to lay down last episode It's not the best thing in the world but it's not the worst you know so after this short very unusual flight pattern we literally went up and in a curve and now I'm trying to provide myself enough power to get a forwards forwards momentum going but that that I very quickly decide is not going to work and I just I'm like well okay fair enough we'll we'll drop the parachutes out we'll have a nice controlled landing we'll get the science and everything will be fine right no no it's not everything blows up in fact uh, and well I may even forget to do the science on the floor where I am just like whoa I, I broke this and there we have proof that when things go wrong I am not the man to have around because I, I focus solely in on the, the the issue the emergency and completely forget about everything that I was supposed to do um, which you know is not the best situation to find yourself in in a space program and instead indeed some would say that I am really not the person to be running this space program that that one uh, quality alone should in fact completely disqualify me from being able to run a space program but thankfully this is a game so we're just gonna carry on and do whatever so right here I'm putting together my like standard science vessel if you will it's got the materials bay it's got the um, the, the, the mystery goo and it's got a keythane scanner on top because that is the bare minimum that you need uh, and from this point on it's just building a launcher underneath so I think what we're gonna do is in fact jump to a little point further on indeed the renaming process where uh, you'll notice that I've basically built the hexapod but with more balls uh, and we're calling this hopeful despite the evidence because I really don't think we're gonna make it to the moon at this point but it's worth checking out so we drag ourselves out to the launch pad and prepare ourselves for the munch shot uh, we take off and in fact have a very nominal flight up towards the uh, orbital velocities. Uh, in fact, it's, it's so incredibly boring. Boring? 
boring, then what we're going to do is rush through this first stage, pow! And after minimals of acceleration, make our way up to, ah, uh, this is like a couple of hundred meters, a couple of hundred kilometers above the surface. Watch those rings slowly expand and you'll notice that I've not, not used up my, uh, my second stage, I suppose, my first liquid stage. Indeed, this is the point where we're like, pa, suborbital, get back down to, to, to the atmosphere and tings. Yo, uh, and we're looking for the moon now because this is where we're going. Uh, we're not really looking for a launch, uh, for a land. Sorry, um, we're we're just trying to get get to the moon's sphere of influence. So we so we have that that extra type of science. You notice that I um, time warped around the planet until we saw the moon rising up over the horizon. This is how I know what direction I'm supposed to be going in. Uh, unfortunately. The fuel didn't quite last as long as it was supposed to. What we're currently using now is what I was going to be using to get back. Um, it's always this middle stage that I seem to have a little bit of trouble with. Um, well, now we're going to watch our apoapsis, and I think it's about 15,000 kilometers. There we go. Uh, or 1,500, uh, 15 million meters. Uh, and that's put me on a, a beautiful trajectory. Unfortunately, it does mean the gravity assist will kick me out of the uh, out of the Kerbin system, and we don't want that. We want to go through the sphere of influence and then have a little like come and touch back with with Kerbin. Uh, wasted fuel, obviously, doing one one way then the other, and you will see at this point that I'm just kind of nudging around, trying to find the middle range because the middle range is like the safe spot, right? On, must be, yeah. Uh, I decide that this we'll just have to do uh in fact this we'll just have to do it's the closest orbit i can get without kicking myself off to like you know interstellar space and this is where the alarm clock comes and features in heavily i set my uh, soi change up and we're just going to um hopefully warp through this uh, yeah, I seem to be struggling with the alarm clock here for some reason. I, I think I was just double checking to make sure it was the right one. But who knows, it's me, anything could have been going on. And so, like a rock that has been thrown far, far too hard, we are leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence, or rather, we are leaving Kerbin's gravitational pull. In fact, that's not even true anyway. But we are leaving Kerbin, heading towards the Mun, travelling the vast voids of just nothing between and then the alarm clock kicks in and we're like right stuff to be done wow look at that yellow circle that's gonna kick us out far but right now we have to do some science and science is all about clicking buttons so here we go we're gonna go around we're gonna click buttons we've got the goo to do we've got the materials we've got the crew reports right now we've got the EVA report to do uh, it's a shame I can't plant a flag on the side of the spaceship because you can guarantee if I could I would and there we go, that beautiful view of the moon that really just didn't last long enough. And we're going to stick in a, a, a manoeuvre node at the top of our orbit so that, you know, it's the easiest bit to pull the periapsis back down into the atmosphere so we don't have to waste all this extra fuel that I brought along with me. Of course, having the fuel out there with me means that I could use it, but, mm, uh, whatever. I see it all just as good training for, you know, taking out longer missions where we're going to need more fuel, right? Anyway, so we warp up to the highest point of our orbit and the alarm clock lets us know that indeed we have a manoeuvre to perform. Uh, and the green bar on the side of my nav ball there tells me how much of a manoeuvre we have to perform. Um, but we're going to ignore that. We're, we're just going to point in the right direction. We're going to click on the periapsis and we're going to bring that down to less than 70 kilometres because that is the point where um, where we can aero break. Uh, I got a little bit confused with the money encounter there, but it's all right. That that's not something that's going to actually affect me because it's actually when I come out of the atmosphere and I'll be at a whole different speed by then. Uh, we get a good good view of Kerbin up from the very heights of the heights, and I think we can just safely assume that this guy is going to get get home safe. Uh, completely forgot to do any Keythane deployment, of course. Um, uh, indeed, why not? Let's watch this guy come in. Um, we're currently over the top of some continent somewhere. Um, indeed, some there's like mountains and stuff. Oh look, we're over the desert. Okay, suddenly we all know where we are. Um, and we've got an awful long way to get round. Uh, though I am, thankfully, scanning for Keythane all the way through. Though I think the chances of me starting a Keythane operation up in the desert just the other side of the water from the Kerbal Spaceport space 
it's not very likely but there we go we we've started our deceleration uh we are deep within the atmosphere now i really do like it quite deep and the uh atmospheric shearing the heating has uh started um I, I i decided to have a look around and see if i could get any more science but we've done science here before and we do have a spare goo ganister goo canister uh i'm not sure what we're going to do with that one we might get it upon landing maybe not um now i've started going back up at this point though i am still decelerating quite hard um so i i think hopefully this is just a little pogo jump and we should come careering down hopefully looking at it we should come careering down right on top of the space though uh yeah not space station spaceport the, the, the place you leave the planet from there we, we, we should hopefully come back down over the top of that uh so right now i am thrusting for all i am worth trying to get my apple apsis uh at a reasonable height because we, we don't we don't want to be like overshooting too far and uh, indeed whilst that glorious view of where we have just come from comes back that means i've gone all the way around the planet and back right yeah yeah if, I, if i've seen it that's that's definitely a thing um so we're going over water over the peninsula of the desert and oh wow space is long so we just hit the apoapsis which means we are back on our way down and back on the way down is definitely what we wanted at this point uh, i know that uh, last episode we did a what what goes up must come back down but we all know that there is an extra line on the side of that what goes up must come back down unless it's going fast enough but anyway um where where are we right now what's going on there's my flag right so we have totally overshot you you, you can see that i I'm, I'm coming back down I'm, I'm i'm grazing the atmosphere and it's just it's just hot you know um but we know we're definitely on our final descent now because when we looked at the uh the map view the blue line went in underneath the surface of the planet which means no matter what we do we're going to end up crashing into this planet but thankfully the crash can be turned into a landing with the help of all these parachutes um and then we've got the boring descent uh, like uh so what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump to the end of this or at least this bit here where the uh, parachutes pop open because you know what a stone falling through the sky looks like i know this you know this we all know it's the most boring part of the game so we're gonna watch a stone underneath the bed sheet fall towards some water instead because you know that's Oh, that's so much more interesting. But touchdown! Oh, things blew up. Oh, where's my where's my materials bay? What? Denied. But still, we got 81 science off of that moon flyby. It's pretty good. We're gonna go into the science depot and we're gonna buy solar panels. I might um, might um and ah about it for a little bit, but I tell you, we're getting solar panels. Well, rather I would have got the solar panels but th this is now what's causing me issues you'll see at the bottom we've got science 19 you're 90 and you'll see at the top science 83 um so if i'd brought the materials bay back or rather if it hadn't exploded we'd have more than enough to be able to get the science that we want but but no i don't um i can't even can't even buy anything else and i have a look through all the other ones and i'm like no no, this is rubbish. Quick, let's go build another mission. And of course, by build another mission, I mean let's break out the good ship Hop Skip and uh, again so that we can, um, well, I don't know where we're going with this one. I just kind of like flung it up in the air and decided to go off in a random direction. Now, of course, because planets are planet sized, the random direction just ended up putting me in the same water biome as where I landed because planets are planet sized and oceans are just big. Um, now, yeah with that in mind we, we again we know what a parabolic flight looks like um yeah I, i'm not going to do anything special with this we're just going to splash down right unfortunately it is nose first but that just happens to be the way that the parachutes were set up and the fact that my my, my tail um uh, winglets are set up like that but it's all sturdy it's all good we're going to observe some materials base bust out our goo science because it's all about the gooey science right right uh get a, a crew report and bust jebediah out to do a, a little swim around uh so yeah eva report and for some reason yeah there we go my first surface sample there we go guys i did it yay for me i remember to do stuff so i can't get back into the pod now I, i'm going to spend ages just trying to turn it over if i'd done it whilst i was still in the pod and turned it flat up i, I could have done it 
Um, and indeed, I'm just going to like mash the keyboard for a little bit here, try, doing my best. I can I can grab the ladder, but that puts me so much underwater that it just, as you can see, pops me back out again. So we'll recover Jeb. Uh, he's got a surface sample and an EVA report. That is 15 science right there. Already that's enough to get my thing. But we're going to recover this vessel and get... Oh, I, I didn't see how much. But that puts us up to 114 science, which is an amazing amount of science. And with that... I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, guys. Next up, we're going to just get the uh, get, get the da, 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 solar panels. That's the words I was looking for. Um, indeed, I will just let the, the, the video roll through for a little second to us doing this. Uh, and, yeah, thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. Next time, we are going to Minmus on a whim just just for no reason other than i want to um also it's a bit easier to land and take off and stuff so we'll probably actually do something at mimus but yeah until that time bye